they are ready. You ready? Good evening. Welcome to the Town Council Chambers, April 28, 2014, 7 p.m. Agenda item number one, pledge allegiance to a flag. Thank you. Gender item number two, roll call, please. Councilor Carrasco? Present. Councilor Clements? Present. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Mana? Present. Councilor Marcucci? Present. Councilor Moriarty? Present. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Peliquin? Absent. Councilor Vandal? Present. Eight here? Thank you. Gender item number three, considering and accept the town council meeting minutes of Monday, April 7, 2014. So moved. Second. Any uh, corrections on this? Anyone have anything? Seeing none, a show of hands is fine. Council Carrasco? Yeah, I just want to, for the record though. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number four, subcommittee reports. A, general government, Council Nicola. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have no meeting minutes to um, read. However, I do have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow, Tuesday, April 29th. It will be held at 6.30 in the Rice Conference Room. Initially, it was going to be in the parent room, but there is a school committee meeting that will be held, I believe. Um, the agenda will include the um, additional changes to Schedule 1 for following positions, the airport manager and the deputy police chief. And there are also two new business items on here, vote to establish a bicentennial committee gift account and also to establish a trail committee gift fund account. So that will be tomorrow evening. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. B, DPW, Council Vandal. Mr. Chairman, I have two reports to report. Uh, for the subcommittee on April 9, 2014, 7 p.m., attending myself, Councilor Car Car Carrasco, citizen members, Mark Morin, Acting Town Manager Reed, Acting DPW Director Heather Blakely, Finance Director Karen Hanois, Councilor Manna, Langevin, Clements, and Moriarty, Wastewater Treatment Plant Manager Paul Krasneski, and Citizen uh, Rich Richmond, Clements, and Roger, and Estelle Cowett. Chairman, call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Uh, agenda item number one, vote to commence the process to accept as a public role the subdivision known as Servant Way and to submit to council for ratification. Motion made and seconded to accept. Acting DPW director said this is first step in a multi-step process. Councilor Clements asked if all required items were completed. They are still some draining issues, but they are being worked on. Motion to approve, vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to zero. Agenda item number two, review and vote to approve FY 2015 Department of Public Works budget. A motion was made by Councilor Carrasco and seconded by citizen member Morin. Uh, questions and discussion, increase for all employee, increases for all employees are 2%, most contract increases and step increases. Ms. Blakely's license still in process and is held up at federal level. Chief of engineering position still open. CE is needed, but now we use the money for outside contracting if needed. Operations manager, making this a salary position. Longevity should be done away with. Grandfather in, but not for new hires. Compromise might be for non-union uh, supervisors not to receive increases not just DPW, but all department heads. Suggested cutting back Ms. Blakely's salary to, by 2% until license comes through. Con concern, how, concern how committee will perceive increases due to increase in taxes. Reminder to everyone that, all, that overall budget is 2.77%. Increase including 2% salary for everyone Ms. Hanoi is asked to present spreadsheet showing 
cost savings, if 2% was backed out of the budget, she, she will. M uh, motion made to approve, vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Agenda item number three. Review and vote to approve FY 2015 snow and ice budget. A motion was made by Councilor Carrasco and seconded by Citizen Member Morin. Questions in, and discussion. Overtime was high. Suggested to Council Vandal to have subcommittee meet to look at adopting a new policy for snow and ice centering around restructuring. Purchase of services included outside contractors. It does as well as, it does as, well as materials and repairs. <coughs> she would like to know how much money was paid out for con contractors that town could not provide with overtime. Mrs. Blakely to provide numbers. Motion made to approve. Vote by show of hands, three to nothing. Agenda item number four. Review and vote to approve sewer enterprise fund 2015 budget. Overview by Mrs. Blakely with invitation to visit the sewer treatment plant before going to council for a vote to see first-hand equipment and this repair and why it needs to be 15% increase to move forward with repairs. Most of mechanical equipment has reached the end of its use. Primary clarifiers are too small for current wet weather events and extreme flow triggers, triggers violations. Cost of repair is dependent on inflow and in infiltration. Critical areas are bio towers. There is no way to bypass the bio towers. Budget includes $200,000 to engineer, bypass, and install bypass lines. It will have to be replaced this year. It'll have to be replaced th this year. Budget does not include the $3.2 million in replace to replace them in 2005. We'll include another three million dollars for a system replacement. Chlorine contact tanks not budgeted this year and since Millennium Power Plant is biggest customer, hoping to partner with them to help with improvements. Phosphorus removal in this year's budget and temporary addition. System planned in the summer months to decrease phosphorus. It's critical and required by permit. Waste activated sludge storage building is falling down. No covers on storage tanks and building cannot be taken down until covers are replaced. $150,000 demolition cost, including retrofitting the covers. FY15 budget encumbered $75,000, but don't have the other $75,000. Offsite odor control of $11 million is unfunded. It is funded into later budgets. Electrical system is out of date and can't be replaced. Parts for some equipment, if not 15% increase now, it will be even bigger in the future years. Collection system, some pipes are over 100 years old, need major amount of money into system for repairs. And this money in the FY16 budget, some of the pipes have been uh, relined, relined, depending on their condition. Pump stations are very old and need to start looking at replacing. Suggested touring, the plant having cable studio videotape tour and show it on public access channel. Motion made to approve. Vote by Shaw fans, all in favor. Agenda item number five, review and vote to approve Water Enterprise Fund FY 2015 budget. Discussion as to why data processing was increased 533.33%. Mrs. Blakely said they it combined two line items instead of having se two separate accounts. Debit service in this money, we, we, debit service is this money we owe and have to pay. Ms. Hanoi said there was some interest on long-term debt for FY15 capital project. Motion made to approve. Vote by show of hands, all in favor. Meeting adjourned at 10 p.m. That's the first one. Now I get the second one, which is April 22nd, Tuesday. Uh, 
uh, Department of Public Works meeting on Tuesday, April 22nd. A meeting of the DPW subcommittee was held on Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014 in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Councilor Carrasco, subcommittee member Mark Morin, also in attendance were Councilor Moriarty, Councilor Nicola, Town Manager Robert Reed, Heather Blakely and Karen Hanoi. Councilor Pelequin and Steve Lazo were absent. I called the meeting to order at 6 p.m., agenda item number one. Vote to approve a one-time contract between Mass DOT Highway Division District Office and the Town of Southbridge, allowing the Town of Southbridge to draw down $72,821 for the reimbursement of specific purpose road and road facility repairs resulting from this harsh winter and to submit to council for ratification. Ms. Blakely said the state had decided to release more money for road repairs. This is time sensitive and she is asking for authorization for the town manager to sign the documents. Councilor Nicola asked what's the wood stock road construction was re responsibility or the state and she has gotten a call about not having any street lights. Ms. Blakely said this road is our responsibility and we will look at it. Councilor Carrasco asked about Gulfwood Road and the needed repairs beyond the school. Ms. Blakely said she would look into it and that can be done as these are not enough funds to do a major repair. Ms. Blakely said there will be, they will be targeted areas that will be patched and or grinded. Ms. Blakely had collected suggested areas for repair from various subcommittee meetings. Members, a motion was made by Councilor Carrasco and seconded by Mark Moran with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the one-time contract with MassDOT Highway Division District Office, allowing the town to draw down $72,821 for the reimbursement of specific purpose road and facility repairs. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. A motion to adjourn was, uh, made, a motion to adjourn was made by Councilor Carrasco and seconded by Mark Morin. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Meeting adjourned 6.10 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, just for public reference to uh, uh, Councilor Vandal actually the first meeting um, was a, it was a three-hour meeting going over the DPW's budget, water, sewer, and stuff. So he summarized this. Right. Uh, there is a lot of other information. If anyone's interested, they can get, receive this and look at it in the town clerk's office. But I want people to understand that he it's three pages. Uh, so he just gave a quick overview of everything. But if you're interested, uh, you can go down to town's clerk's office and, and look at this. Thank you for bringing that out. Thank Certainly. you. Council Mayor, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for you. Um, in regards to the April 9th DPW meeting, on here is not the absent councilor or the citizens member, so it should reflect that absent was Councilor Pelequin and citizen member Steve Lazo also. Thank you, Council. Council Prasco. Also, um, uh, the motion to adjourn was actually made by citizen member Morin, not Councillor Manna, because she's not on that subcommittee. Thank you, Councillor. You have those changes, Stace? I do, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you. Moving on to C, Education and Human Services, Councillor Micucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In the spirit of your statement, uh, the first meeting, for EHS, it is uh, six pages long, so I will try to summarize it so at least you can get, you know, some of the stuff that happened in the meeting and as Mr. Chairman said, it is available. A meeting of the Education and Human Services Subcommittee was held on Thursday, April 3rd in the George Parent Community Room. In attendance were myself, Council Amana, Clemens, Moriarty, Council Langevin, Acting Town Manager Robert Reed, Citizen Member Leanne Pate, and Martina Shea. Library Director Margaret Morrissey, Recreation Director Ronald Pluff, Michael Trombley, Veterans Agent, Council on Aging, Recreation Department Andrew Pelletier, 
Board of Health, Finance Director Karen Hanois, and Citizen Member, uh, Citizen, I'm sorry, Kevin Buxton. Agenda item number one was to review and approve the fiscal 2015 library budget. Discussion was held. Uh, Councillor Clements asked about a about the 2.6% increase in salaries and wages. Mrs. Morrissey said this includes the personnel steps. The adult service librarian gets a step, and the children's librarian gets a step as well. Councillor Clements asked why the library's water and sewer bill would be so high. Ms. Morrissey stated that she is very mindful of that. There was a new toilet installed in the staff area that uses less water, and the other toilets are actually, 10, are actually new 10 to 12 years ago, but there are a lot of parts that need to be replaced on the toilets all the time, and there was 8,000 to 10,000 visitors of the library each month. Ms. Morrissey said the budget figure is reflective of a 10% increase in sewer and a 3% increase in water. Councillor Clemens also asked about the maintenance repairs. Ms. Morrissey stated that with funding of $90,000 voted two years ago, they are looking at quotes for the ceiling, the retaining wall, and the parking area, and most likely it will just be the ceiling as the interior and the retaining wall is being repaired in this round. The retaining wall and the ceilings have been long-term issues. The ceiling was an issue prior to the library in 2000, Ms. Morrissey felt that she was in a position to present a plan and that she feels confident and will work. And she's also working with the DPW director and the inspections department. Finance Director Karen Hanoi said the bottom line budget of $496,649 does meet the municipal annual requirement for the town to get grants from the state aid to the library and $15,000 of the grant is being used to offset the budget. She also said the increases in the budget is a modest 0.83%. A motion was made by Councilor Manna, seconded by Citizen Member Shea to approve the fiscal 2015 library budget of $496,649. It um, passed 5-0. Agenda item number two, review and approve the fiscal 2015 health department budget. Councilor, um, a motion was made by Councilor Manna, seconded by Councilor Clements. Board of Health Director Pelletier discussed the budget pertaining to salaries. It wasn't quite a 2% increase across the board because it reflects that Mr. Moran was making more than he was. Raises of less than 2% would be expected. Chairwoman Marcucci asked Mr. Pelletier to explain the curbside monitor, as this is a, a new position that he would like to see. Mr. Pelletier is proposing a 19-hour per week position. He would like it to be an employee position. He would like to get someone strictly dedicated to curbside monitoring, curbside education, and curbside enforcement. He'd like to bring back the tickets, and in doing so, hopefully gets trash contained and encourages the citizens for more recycling. He envisions that they can use the $72,000 that Casella gives them for the recycle bank. He said the money wouldn't be coming out of the town's general fund. Mr. Pelletier said they have been following law and placing the responsibility of the extra bags of trash on the owner. They would like to delve a little deeper and find out who actually put the bags out there, and that would mean ripping open bags and knocking on doors and trying to assign responsibility to the actual tenant who put the bags out. He hopes that by educating people, it will show them that better recycling habits will help keep their taxes down. This position will enforce the trash laws and containment laws and try to guide a uh, person's responsibility. He would like to take that person and make him the supervisor of the part-time curbside monitor so he is still overseeing curbside pickup, but put him in on a vin in, sorry, put him on innovative programs and increase the recycling. There are a lot of opportunities out there if they could get in touch with commercial partners such as Abishan, who sells fluorescent bulbs, perhaps they would be willing to take back the bulbs. He would like to the approval to use $20,000 of Casella's $72,000 to put this monitor in place. Right now, they are paying $10,000 in overtime for the landfill spotter on Saturdays. If they, had, if they have to cover the landfill for two hours and they have to sub that out, that's $81 an hour. 
Council Amanda asked if the landfill monitor in Sparta is being reimbursed, reimbursed by Casella and the health solid waste recycling inspector is reimbursed 71% by Casella. Mr. Pelletier said yes. She also asked about the addition of a food inspector. Mr. Pelletier said that prior to him coming on board, the principal clerk was sent food service aid certification by former manager Clark. They had been talking using Maritza sparingly to keep on the restaurant inspections. Uh, they were just running under 12% effective on state mandates. Councilor Clemens asked why the town is paying overtime for the Saturday landfill monitor and why doesn't Charlton send anyone to help on Saturdays when they are benefiting from the landfill. Mr. Pelletier said that the town pays the money up front and then Casella reimburses for the landfill. The reason Charlton does not have a person at the landfill is because Mr. Pelletier's employees are familiar with the landfill and how it's run. He isn't sure he wants to put a person up there that he feels he has no control over. Councillor Clement said that her biggest problem was the $19.84 for what the person, um, excuse me, $19.84 for what the person will be doing. She asked if the $72,000 is already earmarked and where's the $20,000 coming from for this position. Ms. Harnoy stated that $72,000 comes in every year, $16,000 is funded from Casella for the principal clerk and the health director, $20,000 for the curbside monitor would come from the 72,000 and then 31,000 is for solid waste holders and 5,000 is for advertising and monitoring. Councilor Moriarty asked if the 10,000 saved from paying overtime to help, to help offset the curbside monitor was in any way reflected as a savings in the budget. Mr. Pelletier said it is not. If they continue to pay overtime for the landfill monitor, the town will get reimbursed, but the town still needs to upfront the money. A motion was made by Councilor Manor, seconded by Councilor Clements, to accept the fiscal year 2015 Health Department budget in the amount of $796,028. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, 5-0. Agenda item number three, review and approve fiscal 2015 Veterans Community Center recreation budget. This was basically um, level funded, except for the increase in water and sewer fees, they were increased by 15.4%, uh, which is recommended by the accountant's office. A motion was made by Council Amanda, seconded by Citizen Member Shea, to accept the FY 2015 Veterans Community Center final budget of $100,852. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 5-0. Mr. Trombley did discuss veterans' benefits. Um, that a motion was made by Citizen Member Pate, seconded by Council Amanda, to approve the FY 2015 Veterans Benefit Memorial final budget in the amount of $132,700. Uh, that did pass 5-0. Also with the recreation budget, few questions, nothing of uh, significance. A motion was made by Citizen Member Pate, seconded by Council Amanda, to accept the FY 2015 recreation budget in the amount of $25,136. Uh, show of hands, all in favor, 5-0. Agenda item number four, discuss funding and payment of the February, and this is just the February, school unemployment invoice in the amount of $17,898.39. Motion was made by Council Amanda, seconded by Citizen Member Pate. Finance Director Hanoi stated they are no longer, there are, there are longer funds, to, there are no longer funds to pay the bills. Acting Town Manager Reed said that the schools are being very evasive and he has been sending emails looking for information on the 2015 projection and has not had the courtesy of a response to date. Mr. Reed feels that $320,000, and this is in school unemployment, is ridiculous. Councilor Clement said that the town is paying the bill and the school is keeping the money in their budget and they have no idea how many people have been replaced. Mr. Reed thought the town should be able to obtain some payroll information. Councilor Clements asked if there would be a public records re request, and Ms. Hanoi said she could try and re request it through the business manager. 
Council Amanda asked how the children were being taught if all these teachers are being laid off. She feels that there should be an audit done on the school department. Citizen member Shea, Shea said there has been no French teacher since December. The kids are just sitting in class playing cards and perhaps the, perhaps the French teacher's salary would cover this bill if they are only paying a substitute. Chairwoman Marcucci asked if we were going to hold off paying the bill until after we meet with the school department about their budget or are we just going to pay the bill. Ms. Harnoy said this bill is due April 17th and if it's not paid, we accrue interest, which the town will be responsible for. Mrs. Harnoy has presented three suggestions as to where the money would come from. Town Council Reserve, which has $69,000 left, $27,000 in certified free cash that hasn't been obligated and we have the op option to make the school department accountable for some of this. Council Langevin felt the town should hold off on paying the bill. He feels that if we keep paying the bill, they're just going to keep expecting it. Mrs. Harnoy has also suggested transferring the funds from another account to pay this bill. Mr. Reed recommended paying it. A motion was made by Councilor Clemens, seconded by Councilor Manor, to transfer funds from the Town Council Reserve Fund to the school unemployment account for payment of the February school unemployment invoice. In, excuse me, invoicing the amount of $17,898.39. Motion passed, all in favor. A motion was made by citizen member Shea, seconded by citizen member Pate to adjourn the meeting. Um, that passed 5-0, and the meeting was adjourned at 9 p.m. I promise the second minutes aren't as long. Education and Human Services, uh, we held a meeting on Thursday, April 17th. In attendance were myself, Mana, Councilor Clemens, Citizen Member Leanne Pate, Martina Shea. Also in attendance were Councilor Nicola, Councilor Carrasco, Town Manager Bob Reed, Karen Hanois, John LaFleche, Dean Yacobucci, Michael Langevin, Buzz Nimbraca, Aaron Quinney, Cara Donovan, Christa, Christopher Olivio, Walter Schlotz, Patricia Gardner, Karen Sheridan, Colleen Culligan, Brent Abramson, and Mike Murray. Call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Agenda item number one, vote to transfer $14,000 from Town Council Reserve Account 11325781 to Veterans Benefits Account 19455771596 to pay benefits for the month of May 2014 and to submit to Council for ratification. Councilor Marcucci said this is a residual item for the month of May 2014. A motion was made by Councilor Mann, a seconded by Councilor Clemens, with her favorable recommendation to Council to approve the transfer of $14,000 from the Town Council Reserve Account 11325781 to Veterans Benefit Account 19455771596 to pay benefits for the month of May 2014. Unanimous 5-0. Agenda item number two, discuss funding and payment of the March school unemployment invoice amount to be determined upon receipt of March invoice. A motion was made by Councillor Clemens, seconded by Leanne Pate, to move this agenda item to be discussed prior to agenda item number four. That passed. Agenda item number three, we view and approve fiscal year 2015 Bay Path budget. John LaFleche discussed the budget set at $19,230,987, including a debt service assessment amount of $1,033,48. Mr. LaFleche discussed the highlights of the budget and its various components. Dean Yacobucci gave an overview of Chapter 70 funds and how it's going to affect Southbridge. The contribution from Southbridge to Bay Path is $824,327 which is a 9.5% increase of the FY required contribution. Mr. LaFleche invites anyone who would like to go up to Bay Path to look at their projects. Mr. Abrahamson stated that the kids who choose to leave Bay Path and return to Southbridge Public Schools does have an impact to the Southbridge school system budget. Mr. LaFleche said that students who have an IEP needs at Bay Path are different from those at Southbridge as Bay Path cannot offer some specialized programs. Buzz stated that the, excuse me, Buzz stated that Southbridge has a large student population who would benefit from career-based studies, but unfortunately there is not enough space available at Bay Path. 
Motion was made by Martina Shea, seconded by Council Mana, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the FY 2015 Bay Path budget of $1,042,656. That passed 5 0. Agenda item number two. Thank you. Discuss funding and payment of the March school unemployment invo invoice, amount to be determined upon receipt of the March invoice. Councilor Marcucci asked. Councilor Marcucci said the town manager has requested amounts for unemployment and did not receive figures in order to prepare the budget. Karen Sheridan said the FY 2014 amount of $277,832, but she cannot determine uh, the figures for 2015. Councilor Nicola asked if a report could be given to the town, letting them know how many people are being laid off in the month so that they can have an idea of what the unemployment amount could be. A motion was made by Councilor Clemens, seconded by Leanne Pate, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the transfer of $8,636.01 from the Town Council Reserve account to the school unemployment account for the March school unemployment invoice. Uh, all in favor, 5-0. Agenda item number four, a review and approve fiscal year 2015 Southbridge school budget. Buzz handed out a presentation on the school's history from when he arrived and what has been done since his arrival. Patricia Garden discussed the changes made for 2013-14. Colleen Culligan discussed the plan for bringing students back to Southbridge Public Schools. She discussed the development of a proposed alternative behavioral education program. Walter Slozak spoke on, spoke on the transportation costs with potential cost savings of $56,612. Uh, we did discuss the e way program. Ms. Sheridan asked if the $72,873.87 that was credited on the phone bill be credited to the school budget. Mrs. Hanoi said she would look into it and speak with Ms. Sheridan. The school budget is looking for a total budget of $26,282, I'm sorry, $26,282,197, which is a 6.7% increase. Mr. Reed and Buzz are going to get together and discuss the budget and see what the adjustments can be made to achieve a mutually agreeable budget. Councilor Marcucci asked that everyone be very mindful uh, to cuts in their budget to help the town with the overall budget. A motion was made by Councilor Manna, seconded by Leanne Pate, with her favorable recommendation to Council to approve the FY 2015 school budget in the amount of $25,123,485. Uh, all in favor, and we, Councilor Clements made a motion to adjourn, seconded by Councilor Manna. Meeting adjourned at 10.55 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. And Mr. Chairman, I am going to schedule another meeting with the school department. Um, there's been an interest by counselors. We do line items on the town side, and counselors are concerned there's some significant increases, six and seven hundred percent increases that we see in the line items. So I'm going to schedule another meeting in the near future so we can review that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Clements. Thank you. On that school budget vote, it was not on all in favor 5 zero. That's right. It was actually a 3-2. Right. It was myself and Martina Shea who That's did right. not vote to recommend. Yes. Could Just you make that, that correction, correction. Stacy? Mm -hmm. It was not unanimous. 3-2. Okay, thank right. you. It was, it was late. Four hours was a long yeah. meeting, and yes. uh, there was a lot discussed. A lot more. I'm than sorry about that. I should have remembered that. Oh no, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. All set, Council. Yes. Council Amanda. I think um, Council Moriarty was before me, so I'll let him go. Okay. Council Moriarty. Just, thank you. Just a real quick one uh, on that first page, the uh, last full paragraph, the fourth word of the fourth sentence. That acronym should actually be IEP, not IAP. Uh, I just wanted to correct that. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All set, Council? Yes, thank you. Council Nina. Also for agenda, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, for agenda item number three, 
Um, our portion contribution from the Southbridge Bay to pass for this Chapter 70 funds was not a 9.57% increase. It was that was our portion of it, just 9.57%. It was not an increase. It's just our portion. That's Thank it. You, Thank you. Counselor. Anyone else? Seeing none. Moving on. D Planning and Development, Councilor Clements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Meeting of the Planning and Development Committee was held on Thursday, April 17th, 2014 in the George Parent Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Subcommittee Member Councillor Mana, Citizens Member Evelyn Petrelli, and Roger Cowett. Also in attendance were Councillor Nicola, Karen Harnoy, Cassandra Ackley, Rose Knoyer, Estelle Cowett, Gus Steves, Maureen Doyle, Dave Payer, Councillor Pelican was absent. We called the meeting at 6 o'clock. The first agenda was to, item was to review and vote to approve the FY 2015 Economic and Development Budget. Ms. Ackley said the town planner assistant position is for six months as the grant is for a calendar year, whereas our budget is for a fiscal year. That came upon from a question from one of our members in regard to what this particular position, um, what we were doing with the funds. I'm going to elaborate a little. Sometimes we don't elaborate much on on. Uh, some of these items and people at home may not know what we're talking about, but they are going to be using some of the grant money for some of the planner positions so that it allows them to um, give more service here to the, the town. A motion was made by Councilor Mana, seconded by Roger Cowett, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the FY215 economic development overall budget of $80,792, which is a 0.43% decrease. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 4-0. Agenda item number two, review and vote to approve the FY 2015 planning budget. Ms. Ackley explained that the legal advertising budget increased 81.13 percent, and that sounds like a lot, but it wasn't actually a lot of money. It was in the, I believe, hundreds, so it's, it wasn't thousands of dollars at 81 percent, just so you know, um, because they are expecting planning projects to be in the paper more. Uh, there's more advertising for the planning projects this year in the newspaper. A motion was made by Councillor Mana, seconded by Roger Cowett, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the FY215 planning overall budget of $3,726, which is a 14.61 increase. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 4-0. Agenda item number three was vote to authorize the town manager to execute documents relative to the Town of Southbridge CDBG Housing Rehabilitation Loan Program for low-slash-moderate income owner-occupied occupants until June 30, 2017, and to submit to Council for ratification. This is the same authorization given to the manager every year to sign the CDBG-related loan program documents. There's a number of areas that are considered uh, confidential, and so the town manager acts on the town's behalf in, that, in those instances. A motion was made by Councillor Mana, seconded by Roger Cowett, with a favorable recommendation to Council to authorize the Town Manager to execute the documents relative to the Town of Southbridge CDBG Housing Rehabilitation Loan Program until June 30, 2017, and it was unanimous 4-0. Agenda Item 4, vote to recommend to Town Council that at Mc a McMahon Fields Park and Improvements Committee be created to provide input into the redesign of the park and that the following citizens be appointed to serve on the committee. Charles Bickerstaff, Richard Marcucci, Patrick Tucker, David Langevin, Paulette DeSorcy, Scott Tatro, Esteban Carrasco, and Sean Moriarty. Mrs. Ackley said there is still one position available. It's not a permanent committee and um, they will just be acting to uh, get input and such for the redesign of the park, which should be really great if we can make that happen. Um, a motion was made by Councillor Manna and seconded by Roger Cowett with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the creation of the McCann Fields and Parks Improvement Committee and approve the appointments of Charles Bickerstaff, Richard Marcucci, Patrick Tucker, David Langevin, Paulette DeSorcy, Scott Tetro, Esteban Carrasco Jr., Sean Moriarty as committee members. It was unanimous 4-0. <clears throat> Agenda item 5, review of the current CDBG projects. Mrs. Ackley said they were doing less projects this year. They will need another meeting to discuss and approve the various projects. Um, and there were some concerns raised and discussed on the Henry Street Park project. Agenda item number six was to discuss the creation of a master plan implementation committee. It's missing. Mrs. Ackley said it was suggested that a master plan implementation committee be formed. She's asking for permission to begin the process. Um, now, there are some, there's a little mistake here. Um, it says once, it said that I said that once the committee is formed that they have a person assigned to each section of government so that this person is informed and can make suggestions when town development projects are being discussed. Somebody did say that, but it wasn't me. Um, we did suggest though, that they attend subcommittee meetings and know what's going on with, within the projects of our community so that certainly they can keep the master plan on track and suggest to us whether we're on track with the master plan. Um, 
Mrs. Ackley will gather information and discuss at the next meeting um, for the development of this committee. Agenda item number seven was to discuss and possibly vote to send to council for review the livestock fowl bylaw. Mrs. Ackley distributed unapproved minutes um, of the joint meeting of the planning and board and planning board and board of health, which was held April 10th, 2014, on this subject. I say they were unapproved because um, they had they were almost completed, and she thought it would be good information for us to see most of the minutes. There were a couple of. Um, items that needed to be added in, uh, corrections that needed to be done, but we will get final approved copy to review also. But she thought this would be helpful to the committee. Um, then it, Mrs. Ackley said that one of the things discussed was the fee structure. Um, it was agreed that the fees would be as follows, $35 for legal notice, which is quite a decrease from the normal charges. She worked very hard, the committee worked hard to get the price down for this particular cost. Small ad, um, smallest we could get in the newspaper. So $35 for legal notice for the permit, $25 for the abutters list, and $5 was all that the planning board was going to be charging for the permit fee for a total of $65 for a livestock um, permit, free. permit fee. This will be the cost of applying for the special permit. The new bylaw would apply only to single family homes. No multifamily dwellings are allowed to have the special permit. Um, Councilor Clement said that this subject will come back to subcommittee at a later date so that the details can be discussed and ironed out. So again, it was really just discussion and we look forward to hopefully completing that sooner than later. It's been on, um, been on the agenda for quite a while. A motion was made by Councilor Manna and seconded by Evelyn Petrelli um, to adjourn, and all in favor 4-0. We adjourn that meeting at 6.53. Submitted by Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. No meeting planned at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Moving on, E, Protection of Person and Property, Councilor Moriarty. Thank you. A uh, meeting of the Protection of Persons and Property <coughs> Subcommittee was held on Thursday, April 10th, 2014, in the George Parent Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Councillor Carrasco, Citizen Members Nash and Jovan. Also in attendance were Councillor Clements, Karen Harnoy, Nick Tortoise, Police Chief Charette, Shane Woodson, Jose Dingy, Scott Bailey, Councillor Manna, uh, Town Manager Reed, Marcu Councillors Marcucci and Langevin. Council Nicola was absent. I called the meeting to order at 6.39 p.m. The first agenda item was to review and vote to approve Fiscal 2015 Inspections Department budget. Mr. Tortoise noted that everything is the same as last year except for a 2% increase in salaries. Motion was made by Mr. Nash and seconded by Councilor Carrasco with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve that budget, uh, overall budget of $153,401, a total of a 1.87% increase. Vote by a show of hands, unanimous, all in favor. Agenda item number two, review and vote to approve the fiscal 2015 public safety budget. Ms. Harnoy noted that this budget is, is really just streetlights only. Uh, motion was made by Council Carrasco, seconded by Mr. Nash. Favorable recommendation to Council to approve this budget in the amount of $176,000, which is level funded. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor? Agenda item number three, review and, and vote to approve the fiscal 2015 police department budget. Chief Charette noted that he has hired two civilian dispatchers uh, before setting his budget, he has cut one vehicle and one police officer out of his initial proposal. He would like to make two promotions in the fiscal year, one to lieutenant, one to sergeant. That should actually be one to, if I recall, one deputy chief and one, and a, and a second lieutenant, or a second individual would then become a lieutenant. These promotions have been reflected in his budget proposal. Uh, chief Charette discussed the personal services salaries budget. He said that in a meeting in May, he will be coming to the council with the intended personnel changes and succession plan within the police department. Councilor Carrasco asked about the top salary for a civilian dispatcher, and discussion was held on the experience that this person brings to the department. Ms. Harnoy uh, passed out the new, a new Schedule One showing the addition of a deputy police officer. Uh, discussion was held on this position and the reasons for moving from a union position to a non-union position with no details and no overtime. And part of that Schedule 1 is Councillor Nicola's meeting tomorrow night. Chief Charette and Lieutenant Woodson noted that this is a career move decision. Purchase of services has ha, uh, rather had increases due to the lease of a new copier and crossing guard uniforms. Two police cruisers uh, requested are under capital outlay. Councillor Carrasco said he would like to see this item removed or lowered to one. Chief Charette said that they, are, that they tried in the past and it didn't work. These vehicles take quite a beating. 
The oldest patrol car is 2006 with over 100,000 miles. The policy is that if two vehicles come on, two vehicles are taken out of service. Motion was made by Mr. Nash and seconded by Mr. Jovan with a favorable recommendation to council to approve this, uh, the police department budget in the amount of $3,388,069, a 6.64% increase. Showing uh, vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing, and the meeting was adjourned at 8.15 p.m. That same subcommittee meet again on Tuesday, April 22nd in the George Parent Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Council Nicola, and Citizen Member Nash. Also in attendance were Councilors Vandal, Clements, and Langevin, Town Manager Reed, Car Karen Harnoy, uh, and from the Fire Department, Mark DeFranzo, Joe Hulick, John Larishell, Derek Lamica, Steve Matthew, Tom Edwards, and Jack Kalanian. Uh, Councilor Carrasco and Jack Jovan were absent, but I think they were actually um, excused. Um, Chairman, I call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Gen item number one, vote to approve Michael Strupa, uh, or Strupa, apologies if I, if I butchered that, as a full-time firefighter paramedic for the town of Southbridge for an indefinite term, effective immediately following successful completion of physical. Chief DeFranzo noted that there was an extensive interview process. Out of the three uh, candidates, uh, Mr. Strupa was chosen. This position is to replace a firefighter who left. Motion was made by Mr. Nash and seconded by Councilman Nicola uh, with a favorable recommendation to Council to, for this hire for an indefinite term, immediately following successful completion of a physical. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor. Agenda item number two, vote to award the bid to Spartan ERV for the purchase of a triple combination pumper truck in the amount of $381,924. The funds were approved for borrowing at the May 20th, 2013 Town Council meeting in the amount of $410,000. Chief DeFranzo said an, rather an exhaustive process to develop a generic specification was conducted. Four bids were sent out and only two were returned. Spartan ERV was chosen. They were the lowest bidder. Their price was $10,797 less than Ferrara. And if we go with the 380 horsepower engine, an additional $7,681 will be saved. These extra dollars can be put toward the purchase of much needed equipment. Council of Landsman asked about the 380 horsepower engine versus a bigger engine. And Chief DeFranzo said that after speaking with a few people uh, on the department that they felt the 380 horsepower is sufficient. Motion was made by Mr. Nash and seconded by Council Nicola with a favorable recommendation to Council to award the bid to Spartan ERV for this triple combination pumper in the amount of $381,924. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor. Agenda item number three, review and vote to approve the fiscal 2015 fire department budget. Uh, I went through each section of the budget uh, and included in the highlights, the bullet points here, personal services, uh, $2,107,498, an increase of 3.13%. Purchase of services, $65,850, an increase of 1.14%. Supplies, $61,500, an increase of 1.65%. Intergovernmental is $28,000, an increase of 27.27%. Chief DeFranzo noted that the increase is due to the emergency notification system contract. Uh, there was no cost for the first year, but we pick up cost for the next two years and then there would be no cost going forward after that. Other charges is $4,700, an increase of, I assume the typo should say 6.82%. Capital outlay is $72,200, which is level funded. Chief DeFranzo said he was able to get a grant for the portable radio and pager replacements so that this was deleted from his current budget. Council Nicola asked about generators for high-risk facilities. Chief DeFranzo said that uh, the fire department has worked with Harrington Hospital as well as Southbridge Rehabilitation and that they now have their own generators. The fire department does have a few generators available to aid facilities if needed. Motion was made by Councilor Nicola, seconded by Mr. Nash, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the fiscal 15 fire department budget in the amount of $2,290,723, which is a 3.17% increase and that was voted on by a show of hands unanimously. That meeting was adjourned at 7.30 p.m. and there is currently no meeting scheduled, but we will have one within the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Mayor. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Just um, on the April 10th meeting minutes, if you could just note on there that I arrived at 7. I wasn't there for the full meeting. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Councilor. Moving on to F, Town Manager's Search Committee. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No report. Thank you, Councilor. Moving on to agenda item number five, Chairman's announcements. I have just a few this evening, really brief. Uh, again, hopefully the weather's gonna be breaking very shortly, uh, warm temperatures and stuff like that, so I would ask the police department to uh, start with the uh, noise, noise again in our community, windows, music cranked up and stuff like that. So if you do, citizens ha have any problems, please reach out to the Southridge Police Department. Also, uh, increase in speeding um, our traffic and stuff like that. So I would ask the Southridge Police Department, and I will reach out definitely with the chief and talk about uh, doing radar, especially on the side streets. I notice a lot of people avoid Main Street because of traffic congestions, and uh, that's where the speed on the side streets pick up. So I would ask them to uh, start clamping on that. And last but not least, really, um, I just want to thank all the counselors. Uh, as you can see, we spent probably about 40 minutes just reading subcommittee meeting minutes. Uh, a lot of time goes into it, a lot of tough decisions ahead of us. Um, but I got to say, uh, uh, this sitting group right here, there was a lot of great questions and answers and stuff like that during the budget process. And, and I, I really do feel we, we've done our due diligence and we, quite frankly, have a lot of uh, not easy decisions to make. But I want to thank all of you personally for putting your time in and asking a lot of great questions. Um, moving on to agenda item number six, the town manager's announcements. Karen Hanois is filling in for Mr. Reed. Thank you. I just have one announcement. The Jacob Edwards Library is holding a centennial reception on May 1st from 4 to 6 p.m. The Jacob Edwards Library Board of Trustees invites you to join us in officially kicking off the year-long celebration of the library's 100th anniversary. And there'll be a book launch and light refreshments and fun. And again, that's on May 1st from 4 to 6 at the library. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number seven, swearing in and presentation. Uh, we have one this evening, Donate Life Flag presentation by Robin Latoy, the Team New England co-manager. I would ask her to meet me over there, please. Robin will get up here in a second. Uh, she has a great, uh, truly inspiring story uh, to tell, and uh, uh, it's actually a miracle and stuff like that. So uh, you will see out in front of the town hall there's a flag. It's an organ donor flag. Um, she did approach the councilors and stuff like that, and we feel this is a very important thing to get her message out to hopefully save somebody else's life. So with that being said, it says, uh, New England Organ Bank, whereas there are more than 120,000 Americans and more than 5,000 in New England who are currently waiting for the life-saving organ transplant, and whereas there are over 1 million life-enhancing tissue transplants each year that are made possible by the generous donation, corners, bone, skin, and other tissues, and whereas we can all help save someone's life and benefit up to 50 recipients by signing up to become an organ and tissue donor by enrolling in the Massachusetts Donor Registry when we apply for our Renew or Driver's License by the Register online at www.donatelifenewengland.org. And whereas, New England is the home of the pioneering efforts of many of the world's first organ, organ excuse me, transplant surgeons. 
It is fitting that the Massachusetts continues its unique leadership role and join the national goals of signing up 50% of our driving population become donors and to dedicate and to make uh, it fast and easy to sign up and to save lives through our registry of motor vehicles. And whereas this observation pays tribute to the organ and tissue donors and their families whose decision to donate life enables others to receive life-saving organs and tissues for transplant. Now, therefore, the town of Southridge, Massachusetts, by its town council hereby proclaims April 2014 to be Donate Life Month. We urge all citizens of Southridge to make a conscious of this event and participate finally in its observation. Signed by me, David S. Landsman, Chairman, and also the Acting Town Manager, Robert Reed. I would ask Robin to accept this on behalf of the Council in the Town of Southridge, and I would love you to share some of your story to educate the public. And thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, and I'd first like to thank the Council for having me come this evening to talk about this very important subject that's near and dear to my heart. I was, um, I was born and raised here in Southridge, Massachusetts, and I had a kidney transplant on January 3rd, 2010. I just celebrated my four-year transplant anniversary. Before transplant, I was on dialysis for seven and a half years, being a swim instructor at the local YMCA, leading an active life, and denying how sick I really was. Seven and a half years into dialysis, I became quite sick with fluid building up around my heart. I ended up with congestive heart failure in 2009. I was told that I needed a transplant or the time would be too late for me if I didn't get a transplant immediately. Two months after that, I received the call at midnight on January 2nd, 2010. That call changed my life. I live life to the fullest every day, trying to promote organ donation as much as I can. I currently am involved in taking part in the transplant games, which happen every year, every other year it's in a uh, country. In 2010, I was seven months out of transplant. I was able to, because of my blood work and because of my health being so well, I was able to participate in the first transplant games in Madison, Wisconsin. 2011, I was an athlete on Team USA, the only one from New England, to compete in the World Transplant Games in Sweden, where you have ages six years old to 80 years old, all with organ transplants, celebrating just like the real Olympics in events, basketball, badminton, ping pong, swimming, as well as many other events that the real Olympics do. In 2012, I was on Team Northeast and I participated in the Transplant Games of America in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This past summer, I attended the World Transplant Games again in South Africa. 51 countries again, ages six years old to 80 years old, being alive, honoring our donor and receiving the special gift that we've received and sharing stories with each other. These games are very inspirational and emotional at the same time as athletes go, as well as donor family members who have not met the recipients, some have, they honor their loved ones by going to the transplant games, hearing and sharing stories. They come up to us as athletes and thank us for being athletic and for being able to be alive and taking care of ourselves with their loved ones' organs. Also, we thank them because without that person checking that box off at the Registry of Motor Vehicles, I would not be here today to be able to be talking to all of you. It only takes a few seconds at the registry to check off that yes box. Some people have their own personal beliefs. I'm not standing here and saying that I, I know that all of you, I would like all of you to do it, but I understand everybody's personal beliefs. One person can save 52 different parts of their body to go to the people that are suffering. I received a transplant of a kidney. The major organs are also being able to be living donors, some of your major organs. You can do this by calling up your local hospital saying, I want to give a kidney, I have nobody that needs one, I want to give a part of my liver, I want to give a part of my lung, and you can all give those things as being live. You don't have to be deceased. Those organs can then be what's called an organ chain. 
If you here in Southbridge want to be a donor, you call up UMass in Worcester or Tufts, the leading hospitals. They'll take that organ from you as a living donor. They'll send it to wherever it's a match. It could be a match in Maine. It could be a match in California. A person gives in California, and it just makes a complete circle. And it ends up saving sometimes four or five different people in what they call a chain donation. All of you that aren't registered at the RMV, what you can do is, again, like Mr. Langevin said, you can register on www.donatelifenewengland.org. And it's a very simple process. And I'm here today to get as many people up at the registry or on that site to become organ donors. So again, you can see this miracle that's happened to me by please taking a moment, sharing my story, registering if you've never wrote, registered before. Maybe I've inspired some of you by coming here tonight. And I would just like, to, again, to thank everybody for having me. And it's a pleasure in the town I grew up, up in to be able to do this here in Southbridge. Thank you very much. Rob, and I just want to, again, uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations to you. Uh, and even more importantly, congratulations to the family that saved your life and gave you a whole new leaf on life and stuff like that. And I'm sure you appreciate it every day, more and more every day. But, um, um, and I, I really do appreciate you coming before our community. And I'm sure you're reaching out to other communities and, and advocate how important this is to you and, and other people. So I want to thank you for coming forward and uh, advocating and, and sharing your, stu your story to our community. Thank, thank you very you. much again for having me. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Gender item number eight, Citizens Forum. Anyone would like to speak? on something that is not on the agenda this evening. Please state your name and address. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Michael Dupuy. I live at 38 Laurel Hill Road. I am also chairperson for the Southbridge Fest Committee Parade. And I'm here to invite the counselors to participate in our Southbridge Fest Parade on May 31st. Um, anybody else in the public who wants to participate, you can reach us through Facebook at Southbridge Fest, and we'll be willing to have anybody from town that wants to participate in this parade. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hironoise, can you uh, make sure we get that on the cable access scroll too and, and start promoting um, the downtown uh, fest and stuff like that so we can educate the public? Okay. Council Mann, do you have a question? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you. I just have a question for Mr. Dupree. I, I'm sorry. Yep. Dupree. Yep. Thank you. I do apologize. What time is uh, the parade? The parade steps off at 11 a.m. from 25 Coal Ave, and will be proceeding down Main Street to the Common. So do you request anybody that would like to participate to be there a half hour early? Yes, early? at least. Um, I'm, most of the regulars that I already have set up, I'm getting in around 10, 10, 15. Um, so that way there I can get everything set up because this is going to be a bigger parade than last year. And last year was the biggest parade the Southridge Fest has ever had. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. All set? Yes. Is there anyone else that would come forward during Citizen Forum? Seeing none, moving on. Gender item number nine. Shall the town vote to approve of a measure proposed by a petition on March 31st, 2014 in accordance with Chapter 12, Section 3 of the Town Charter as summarized below. The, mem uh, excuse me, the measure of purpose the filing of the so-called home rule petition with the state legislature for special legislation to amend the town charter. If approved by the voters at this election, the proposed legislation would take effect upon enactment by the state legis legislature. The purpose legislation seeks to reestablish an open town meeting board of selectmen town administrative form of government. 
as, as in an effort prior to two th excuse me, March 2nd, 1973, on the general laws, special acts, and bylaws of the town of Southbridge. The legislation would abolish the nine-member town council and the position of town manager. The legislation provides that the process for calling for and holding an open town meeting would be governed by the general laws, special acts applicable to the town and the town bylaws existing prior to March 2nd, 1973. This legislation would establish a five-member board of selectmen with each selectman serving a term of three years and limited to two consecutive terms of service. The board of selectmen would have the power of the town council provided for under the current charter and further would appoint all town officers and employees subject to civil service laws or as otherwise may be provided by the Mass General Laws in the Charter, a 15-member Finance Committee would be appointed by the Town Moderator. The legislation would also create the position of Town Administrator, would serve at the will of the Board of Selectmen and exercise all other powers of the Town Manager as provided for under the current Charter. Any person appointed as the town administrator would be required to qualify as a registered voter of the town within the six month of the date of appointment. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion on this? Council Amano. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. I do have some questions for um, Attorney Goldberg, if that's possible. I believe she's here tonight, so she would like to come forward, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Attorney Goldberg, um, I had the opportunity to read, reread, and reread this. And um, the proposed amendments um, is to revise the charter from June 6, 2003, that was adopted by the voters of the town of Southridge. Um, and looking through this, I, I see where there's a number of sections that are going to be repealed. My question was, this charter is no longer in existence and neither are the sections that they want repealed as we have a new charter that was voted on in 2013. And I believe there may have also been some amendments between 2003 and 2010. I'm not sure, I didn't have access to get that charter. Um, so I, I have a lot of concerns about that. How can we, how can something be voted on if it doesn't exist? Certainly. Thank you. Um, Lauren Goldberg, Copeland and Page. Um, the, can, you, can you, yeah. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. The proposed, the petition proposes to reestablish the form of town government um, that existed prior to the current town council form of government. As I think I mentioned the last time I was here, but I'd like to reiterate, I, I don't believe that if this petition were rejected by the council tonight, presented to the voters, and then approved by the voters, that the general court would enact the, a special act that looks like the petition um, that's been submitted to the town council. I do believe that it would need to be revised by the, the um, House Council and Senate Council to actually put forward a piece of legislation that looked like a charter. That is not what this is. Um, and I do think there are several provisions in this um, petition that would need to be um, uh, clarified in order to determine exactly what charter would be the, the charter for the town of Southbridge. Um, that being said, and. I, um, I hope I'm not being too, le too lengthy here, but what, what the language you have in front of you does is summarize what the petition is saying so that voters can understand what's being proposed. Nevertheless, if this is approved, what goes up to the legislature isn't just the question 
the certified vote on the question that's presented to the voters, but the actual piece of legislation that the council is being asked to adopt itself. So um, in terms of could you revise a charter that doesn't exist, essentially what the petition proposes is to reestablish a previous version of the town's governance. It's not simply to just revise the current charter by taking out one piece and inserting another. Okay, and I did have another question, but I, I'm not sure if you could answer that. And that is um, the revised bylaws that this wants to go back to um, was adopted June 6, 1956, and was in effect until 1973, until they had the new form of government that was voted on by the town of Southbridge. And in section six, article three, section six, where it says town meetings, 150 registered voters at any town meeting for the transaction of business shall constitute a quorum. I guess my question would be, where did they get that number? And can that number be changed? Um, I'm just, I'm confused on that number because that's quite a bit of people that you need to get at a town meeting um, to move your government to go forward if they're gonna be voting on the warrants and whatnot. Mr. Chair. Um, I, I can't answer that question. I don't know where they got the number of 150. Um, but I think that that question um, provides a little bit of, of uh, support for the position that I was just explaining, which is there would need to be some massaging of the actual petition that's been submitted. Because how you undo years of legislative work and go back to a previously existing form of, of government is a challenge. Um, the way that you would typically see a new charter is similar to what you all did a few, or last year in terms of your voting for special legislation. You delete one particular provision of your charter and you insert a new provision. Or you delete the text of your charter and you insert in its place new text that, that you have seen and looked at. Um, what's being proposed is more broad than that. It's not um, drilled down to the actual language. So that, as I suggested, I, I do think that that would be an issue for the general court and something that they would have to work out. Okay. And just one more. Um, could we have some kind of a committee? Uh, uh, I don't know if it would be elected or if it would be something that our chair would, um, to, to review, to review this and discuss this, because this is, this is huge. So, your opinion on that? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, there is nothing that would prohibit the council from appointing, or from creating a committee that would be, and charge it with studying the proposal and or um, the, the form of the town's government currently, what works, what doesn't work, with the, an eye to addressing some of the issues that have been raised in this petition. Um, you know, there are, there are always, um, refinements that can be made to a form of town government over time um, that are, are vetted and um, um, inputs received not only from the voters, uh, which is always important, but also from the town itself, uh, department heads, the council, uh, manager, what works, what doesn't work, what could use review. So certainly there could be a committee appointed to review this proposal or to look at the issue of town governance more generally. And that is something that um, that towns can do uh, without any special legislative authority, as compared to an elected charter commission, which we discussed, which might do some of the same work, but would only be able to be created by a uh, petition process that originates with the voters themselves rather than with the council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Certainly. Any other questions? Just want to again educate the people, okay? Uh, as we said at the last meeting, um, Ms. Dows came in, presented the petition, um, and as I said, we are going to have it on this agenda item. So I just want everyone to understand a no vote, a no vote sends it on and puts it on the ballot in our June election, okay? A yes vote 
we'll send it to our legislation and get it tied up there. But I just want everyone to understand what they're voting for and how they're voting for um, so it's clear. Any questions? Council Moriarty. Not so much a question, just a comment. I, I, obviously, this has been a topic of, of discussion all over the place. So, uh, and I, I've heard a lot of people kind of offer up different thoughts and, and strategy. Vote this way, and this will happen. Vote that way, that'll happen, and, and that sort of thing. And, and just just for clarification, uh, on my end, anyways, I'll be voting no uh, solely because I, I'd prefer it to go before the people. And if the people decide that this is what they want, then so be it. But uh, you know, I think that's. For me, anyways, I feel that's the most appropriate venue. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Carrasco. Yes, um, I just, I've been actually very silent on this matter. Um, I've been trying to study, and I don't know the form of government from 1973. I wasn't around. Um, I wasn't born then. But um, in studying and looking around, also, um, I don't see the benefit of going back. But if this is what the public wants, and this is what the town of Southbridge wants, Therefore, I will be voting no and let the town of Southbridge decide. That's all I have. Councilor Vandal. I, I will be voting no also. I want this to go to the people. It's the people's decision. Too big a decision for us to make up here. The people will vote and, and tell you what they want. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Manor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have one more question for Ms. Goldberg um, through you. In regards to this petition, and if everything is passed, um, do we now go back to all the bylaws from 1953 through 1973? Do the bylaws that we have now in place, are those all? Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, the best answer I can give you is that that would have to be something that the legislature tackles. Um, the petition suggests that that's the case. There may be things that have happened in the interim that should not be interfered with. Um, and, and that really is something that, that the legislature would have to look at. And I expect that they would look to the council and or to the town manager for some guidance as to how to move forward if the voters do pass this and there's, um, and the matter is, um, is taken, taken up to the legislature. Um, it is possible that the legislature could say, let's, let's ask the council um, to come back with its proposal and try to meld the, the two, um, or to say that the, the general court could say, X, Y, and Z things aren't things that we believe should be addressed, um, and that would go through the regular legislative process. There's a public hearing. Um, on, on legislation, it would be scheduled for a hearing, but I also do believe that the town's state representative and state senator would look to um, the town's people for some guidance, um, and town government in particular, as to what the implications might be of a petition of this nature. Thank you. That's right. Councilor Nicola. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to state that I too will be voting no, um, specifically uh, for two reasons. One, I believe this is something that the uh, town should be looking at, which will require doing homework. And more than just, it's more than just a question on the ballot, it will change the face of government. So I suggest that you do your homework. It's a very big question. And um, the other reason that I'll be voting no is because I will also be voting no at the polls. And I'm going to be consistent. Thank you. Certainly. Council Clemens. Over. Um, is it possible that the legislator, legislature would um, suggest a elected charter commission to get public input, to, to actually do the process of what they're proposing here? Is that a possibility at all, you know, in terms of getting more input other than 10 people who designed it? Mr. Chairman. Certainly. Um, my expectation is that they would not suggest an elected charter commission. Mm -hmm. um, the legislature gets special act charter amendments and charter adoptions um, as part of its work, and that would not be unusual. Um, as I indicated earlier, 
in my experience, proposals that go up to the legislature are, are more concrete, particularly when they make such a big change uh, to the form of government. Um, in terms of whether they might look for voter input, there would be another way for the legislature to look for voter input, and that would be to request that this um, question, uh, even if the legislature were able to address some of the substantive issues that are in the petition, the legislature might say, we'll pass this, but we're going to make it subject to voter acceptance, so mm -hmm. acceptance by the electorate after there's actual um, concrete language changes. Um, in the interim, though, they, they may encourage, um, rather than an elected charter commission, feedback about what this would actually mean. Um, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to predict with accuracy what they might or might not do, but I can see that they might have some questions and issues with how it would be implemented. And one more thing. Um, in your experience with other communities that you're aware of, in terms of the quorum rules, regulations, or how people put things into place, is there some type of formula that is used generally? Is there a percentage? Or? Mm. Mr. Chairman, there's not. Um, in my experience, it can range from zero quorum to 200 voters, um, maybe a certain number of voters for an annual town meeting versus a, a different number for a special town meeting. It's really a matter of local policy. There is no general law that sets a quorum for a town meeting, so it's from town to town it, it differs. Um, some towns have a hard time getting a quorum, and mm -hmm. so they'll amend their bylaws to reduce the quorum for that reason. Other towns believe it's imperative that you have a certain number of voters appear um, in order to make sure that the voters' will is being carried out, and so they require that higher quorum because they want to encourage voter participation or a minimum level of voter participation. So it, it's always possible that the representation that seems to be seek, sought here in this petition isn't necessarily going to be representative of the 10,000 or so voters we have here, 11,000 voters. Well, that, again, that's just my opinion. If you're only looking for 50 people or 100 people to show up at a meeting, if they show up, um, I'd like to see more just show up at a subcommittee meeting to, while we're vetting the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm. Certainly. Mr. Chairman, members of the Council, my name is Michael Caplett, and I'm an attorney <coughs> excuse me, here in Southridge with an office at 3 Bullen Avenue, and I represent the sponsors of the petition that has been put before you tonight. Um, and just to echo what Attorney Goldberg said, the issue for the Council tonight is to decide whether or not either A, to uh, submit this to the legislature by an affirmative that? vote. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is Mr. Capulet a resident of Southbridge? And if not, should we be voting for him to speak? We, we if can, I may, I'm not a resident of Southbridge. He's not, he's not a resident of Southbridge, but if... I believe those are the rules yeah, from absolutely. the past. So I just, I want to be consistent with the rules. I don't want to... Motion? Second. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Go ahead, Mr. Capulet. Thank you. Um, the issue is either A, that the town council approves this petition and submits it with its approval to the uh, state legislature. And as Attorney Goldberg pointed out, it won't be just the, the question that goes up, it will be the whole body of the petition. And the thrust of the petition, she quite rightly points out, is to go back to the town meeting board of selectmen uh, form of government that Southridge had until 1973. And there's no question that there are a myriad of details that would have to be worked out if that was to occur. And the other option is to deny the petition, which, quite frankly, sensing the, the will of the council tonight, that seems to be where the council is headed, not trying to predict how you're going to vote. But that is precisely what the sponsors would prefer. They would prefer to see the voters of Southbridge act upon it in June at the annual town election. Let the voters have their say, whether they want to change the form of government or not. The alternative, as has been suggested, could be a very lengthy and protracted period of waiting. We don't know what the legislature is going to do. You don't know what it is they're going to do or when they're going to do it. And one of the issues that struck me tonight, again, and I was here at the April 7th meeting when the, uh, the town manager search committee reported back that they had to put their efforts on hold pending uh, the result of this, 
And again, that could put this town again in a period of a suspended animation, as it were, uh, nothing happening until the uh, legislature acts. But having said that, if we wait until the town, I'm sorry, the legislature acts and then comes back for a vote at that point, it will, it will give a clear indication that, uh, that, that we're going to be waiting that much longer. And that sounds like double talk, and perhaps it is. But what the voters should do is act upon this in the June election, have some clear guidance as to where, where the town is heading. And that's what the sponsors would request of this town council tonight. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. If I may, just two questions. One is that some, many towns, as Attorney Goldberg uh, suggests, have zero quorums. Sturbridge, for instance, which I have a great deal of familiarity being the town moderator there, has a zero quorum in Sturbridge for its town meetings. There was another question raised by Mrs. Clemens at the last meeting as to salaries for all these people. Right now at Sturbridge, I can report there is no salary for the Board of Selectmen, town moderator, and the other various boards. Uh, there is a stipend study committee which is conducting an investigation as to whether they should return to uh, a, a stipend situation. The stipends that they apparently are going to recommend would total up to be about $18,000 for a variety of boards. But that would be up to the voters, as it always is, as part of the annual budget. Council of Clements. Thank you. Um, Mr. If I may, through you, Mr. Chair, um, it was reported in the paper that there were um, a number of people, 10 people or so, that put this petition together. Could you tell us who they were? I could not tell you all the names. I can tell you they are primarily, five of them are seated in the front row here. I do not know all the names who put the petition together. I edited the petition. I did not author it. James Marino, who's in the front row, is the primary person I've had dealings with in contact. But is it your understanding it was 10 people who suggested I don't the petition? Know you don't know. Okay. But I, I just know read that in the paper. So I, I know curious. that approximately 700 people signed the petition. Mm -hmm. So I think that's more than 10. Some you all set, Council? Yeah, I'm all set. Thank you. Council Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. With all due respect, um, that's Sturbridge you're talking about, and we're Southbridge, and we're totally different from Sturbridge. And the, you may have gotten 700 signatures. I want to know if they read every word in this petition. That's my question, and I don't think you can answer that for me. I, I was not present when they signed it. Thank I you. couldn't possibly answer that, no. I think, I, however, I am one of the few people in this room that attended the last town meeting that was held here in Southridge. In those ancient days of yore, I was the recreation director for the town of Southridge, where I was born and raised and lived until 1986. Thank you. And I also spoke to a former selectman, and his reason for going to a town manager form of government, they told me, was the town was getting too large. They were part-time, and they had full-time jobs. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, again, a spare to move things on. Um, they they presented the position, the petition, um, and again, I feel the same way. I mean, if we if we don't act, and personally, I am going to vote no. And the reason why I'm going to vote no is this government is in limbo right now. As you did state, we suspended our town manager search. We're just in limbo. So I'm sure over the next seven weeks, there's going to be much debating on both sides. Uh, they'll have time, and as Council Nicole said, they have to do their due diligence and do their homework. And you hope the citizens do their homework. Um, but to have just an open debate going back and forth on this, which is plenty of time, um, they came before us with a petition. Uh, certified 600 and something, almost 700. I don't have to agree with it all, but they did the due diligence and now it's up to us to either put it on the ballot or let it get lost in a shuffle for a while and then our government is not gonna move forward. So um, I believe I'm ready to vote. I don't know if anyone else is. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call please. Councilor Clements? No. Councilor Langevin? No. Councilor Mana? No. Councilor Marcucci? No. Councilor Moriarty? No. Councilor Nicola? No. Councilor Vandal? No. 
Councilor Crosco? No. Eight no. Thank you. This will be on the ballot in June. Moving on. Gender item number 10. Vote to approve Michael Struper as a full-time firefighter paramedic for the town of South for an indefinite term effective immediately following the successful completion of a physical. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? I will floor, give the floor to the chief. Thank you, Council. Uh, as uh, we talked about at subcommittee, we had a very lengthy process to figure out who we should hire as our next firefighter paramedic as a replacement. Uh, we had a testing process, we had an interview process, and after all of was said and done, Mr. Strupa came out number one. So he's been recommended for the position of uh, full-time firefighter paramedic for the town of South, which I think would be a great asset to the community. He understands what we're looking for and is willing to accept the challenges that we have with our department. So I hope you vote tonight to uh, put him on our department. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Just reminding the public, this did go before the subcommittee and it came out favorable. And this is just, we are filling a position that somebody left. This is not a new position. With that being said, roll call, please. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Mana? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Crosco? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Would you like to speak? Um, I'd just like to thank the council for this opportunity to uh, uh, continue serving. Uh, I'm honored to be selected uh, to the position. I'm looking forward to getting to know the town of Southbridge and serving the town of Southbridge for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations. Moving on to agenda item number 11, vote to transfer 14,000 from the Town Council Reserve Account 11325781 to Veterans Benefit Account 19455771596 to pay benefits for the month of May 2014. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call, please. Council Mana? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Crosco? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Uh, number 12, vote to transfer $8,636.01 from Town Council Reserve Account to School Unemployment Account to pay the March School Unemployment Invoices motion. Second. Any discussion on this? <laughs> Seeing none, roll call, please. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Crosco? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Generator number 13, vote to transfer $7,645 from the repair account hanging door number 35895899090980 to the airport revolving fund number 8039 to pay reimbursements to Mr. Latour per the memorandum of agreement dated March 20th, 2014 for the purpose of effecting a termination of the Southbridge Municipal Airport lease agreement. So moved. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Council Amanda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to emphasize that this is not the termination of the airport. It's just the termination of the lease agreement. Thank you. That's Thank all. you. Any other discussion? Seeing on roll call, please. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Crosco? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you, motion passes. 
Agenda item number 14, vote to award the bid of Spartan ER, ERV for the purchase of a triple combination pumper truck in the amount of $381,924. The funds were approved for the borrowing of at the May 20th, 2013 Town Council meeting in the amount of $410,000. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Crosco? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Eight yes. Motion passes. Gender item number 15, vote to commence the process to accept as a public road the subdiv subdivision known as Servant Way and refer to the matter to the Planning Board for a non-binding recommendation. Any discussion on this one? Council comments. Sorry, I just have a question. Will this come back to us also in the final? I'm not sure how the process works. When they sure. do accept it, we get it back, correct? Absolutely. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I know that there's a couple little things yeah. I've been hearing, so I just want, and I know um, our DPW director is, is making sure that everything is complied with, so. Yep. Thank you. Certainly. Any other questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Carrasco? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Agenda item number 16, vote to approve the one-time contract between the Mass DOD Highways Division District Office and the Town of Southridge, allowing the Town of Southridge the drawdown of $72,821 for the reimbursement of specific purpose road of, excuse me, road and road facility repairs resulting from this harsh winter. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on this? Seeing on this, this did go before our DPW subcommittee and it did pass. Um, just a reference, Council Nicole. I just wanted to clarify that this is not $72,000 coming out of our funding. Correct. That this is money that is coming through the state. Yes. To the town. Thank you. Correct. And again, it's not designed for doing large stretches of roads and stuff like that. It's just taking care of the needs from the winter of potholes and stuff like that. Any other discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Councilor Crosco? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Agenda item number 17, vote to authorize the funds for architectural peer review for the Cumberland Farm special permit application to flow through the town financial system with the funding to come from the applicant. Excuse me. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion on this? Council Makuchi first. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is Sandra yep. Ackley? Sandra, could I have you come up to the podium for a second just to explain something to me that I don't understand? Well, maybe I understand it. I just need some clarification. If I can answer it, I will. <laughs> Could you define specifically what that means? Well, I can, actually. Um, Massachusetts general law provides for peer review when you are deliberating a special permit. And what that means is that at the applicant's expense, the town can hire a consultant, in this case an architect, to review the plans on the town's behalf because the planning board or the redevelopment authority are not experts regarding architecture. So when they're reading and approving or disapproving a plan, it's really very helpful for them to have this professional advice from someone on their side. And this is a soup to nuts type of report, Sandra, or is it specific to something? It's specific to a project and it's specific uh, in, in the case of the traffic um, 
impact study, which you approved last time, it was to specifically um, assess the traffic impact study that Cumberland Farms submitted. In this case, the architect will review the, the plans of the building and the grounds and how it looks to make sure it fits in with the downtown guidelines and um, historical guidelines. Okay, and in the weekly report, um, there was a note from you that the planning board heard and approved a, I'm sorry, I don't even want to say that. Um, the long-awaited public hearing for Cumberland Farms was put off once again because we had not yet received the results of the traffic study review, and it will now be opened on May 14th at 6.45 p.m. The Redevelopment Authority met on April 22nd with both Cumberland Farms and architect Dan Benoit present. Since the project is in the downtown redevelopment area, the RDA must vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness, which I don't understand what that is. Um, at this point, details are being discussed with the RDA, and we'll meet one more time before voting. Now, so there's two separate, there's two separate processes there. One of them is the traffic impact study. Mm -hmm. The other is the architectural study, and the architectural study is being done on behalf of the Redevelopment Authority because they have, they have a approved, or we have an approved downtown redevelopment plan, and there are guidelines that were approved with the plan by the town, and within those guidelines, it says that the redevelopment authority for a new project like this would review and um, issue a certificate of appropriateness if that's, a, if it's, if they agree that the building is appropriate for their, redeve for their redevelopment area. And the redevelopment authority is an authority. It has the powers to um, hire the um, architect on its own. But what happens is that it's best for the money to flow through the town for purposes of transparency. So they actually were able to sign their own agreement with the architect and we could just have the Cumberland Farms people issue the check to the architect, but that really wouldn't be in the best interest of the town. Is it prudent, though, if they're not going to open the traffic study review until May 14th? I mean, if the traffic study review is negative, then isn't everything else a mute point? Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's a problem that the redevelopment authority is deliberating now. Um, they've actually Cumberland Farms came to the redevelopment authority actually in the summertime um, because they knew that if they didn't get support from the redevelopment authority, that the redevelopment authority would not be able to recommend the um, the project to the planning board. In the end, the planning board has to approve a special permit. They will not do that if the redevelopment authority says, we don't think this is appropriate. But I would think the first step, and I'm, this is only my opinion, the first step would be to see if the traffic study is something that's viable, because if it's not, everything else is dead in the water. Well, they didn't even submit an application to the planning board until the fall, and I don't think others saw it that way. Uh, but at any rate, we addressed the issues as they came forward. And if both of those things don't happen, it would not be approved. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Vandal. Um, I, I want to put a stop on this until after the study. What, what Councilor Marcucci said makes sense. Why are we going to vote for something tonight if the traffic study doesn't come in, if it comes in, good. You know what I mean? If it comes in, there's too many cars or whatever, then we're just putting the cart before the horse here. I understand what you're saying, but the petitioners 
came to the Redevelopment Authority when they did, so the Redevelopment Authority responded appropriately, I think. I'll say Council. Thank you, yes, thank you. Council comments. This is, a not, this is a professional opinion that is supposed to help in the decision-making process. Yes. Yes. Okay. This is not costing the town any money. This money is being paid for by the applicant. Yes. Okay. So it's due diligence, whether it's before or after, it's due diligence. And they've already done this. All they're asking now is for transparency and using our financial system so that they're not being paid directly, because that would not be a good thing. <laughs> I mean, really, it, this is really a formality, and I thought it was great when we discussed it at the uh, meeting that we're being proactive in transparency, that where money comes in from an entity that applies, money gets put through the system properly, so there is no question about how much and where it went and who wrote a check and who received a check. This is just due diligence, and in the end, all the information will come together to the planning board, and the planning board will make their decision. It's due diligence. I, I'm not sure how this can hurt when it's somebody that the town, on the town's behalf, hired. The Cumberland Farms didn't hire these people. The town chose who they wanted for an architect to make sure that if indeed this goes through, if it goes through, it will be the most aesthetically pleasing to our, our downtown area. I'm not sure why we're really debating something that is, it, it's, a, it's a professional opinion that we need more of those, and I don't see why it's an issue at all. It seems irrelevant to, to worry about it that way. I mean, it's not going to be done until it's done, until everything is done, so. Thank you. All set, Council. Council Marcucci. Mr. Chair, I'm not debating anything, and I didn't say I was not going to support this. I just offered my opinion and wanted some definition of something I didn't understand. But Did it's I certainly not a debate. You know, I just wanted clarification for myself. Did I give you the clarification you, did. Thank you, you need? Yes, you did. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Sir. Yes. Council comments. I just want to make it clear. I was. I'm only stating my comments. It was nothing. It was more for probably a different councillor's uh, comment. But I. I think what Ms. Uh, what Councillor Marcucci asked is very important because the public needs to know what we're doing. Absolutely. I'm just. I was just putting it out there as to the understanding as to who's paying, why we're doing it, and. But I do appreciate Councillor Marcucci's questioning what th certain things meant because not everybody understands what the process is. So I hope there's no offense taken at my, my comment. Sorry if there was. No. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call, please. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Crasco? Yes. Seven yes, one no. Thank you. Motion does pass. Agenda item number 18, vote to authorize the town manager to execute documents relative to the town of Southridge C D B G housing rehabilitation loan program for low moderate income owner occupied occupants until June 30th, 2007. Do I have a motion? So moved. So, second. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call, please. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Mana? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Crasco? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Eight yes. Motion passes. Agenda item number 19. Vote to recommend to the Town Council that the McMahon Field and Park Improvements Committee be created to provide input in the redesign of the park, and that the following citizens be appointed to serve on the committee. Charles Bickerstaff, Scott Tatro, David Langevin, Paulette DeSorsi, Patrick Tucker, Sean Moriarty, Richard Marcucci, and Esteban Carrasco. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Council Carrasco. I I just want to make a brief correction. I want to make sure it just says junior because that is also my father's name and lives in town. That's Thank all. you for the Thank correction. You. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call, please. Council Mana? Yes. Council Marcucci? Abstain. Abstain. Council Moriarty? Abstain. Council Nicola? Yes. 
Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Crasco? Abstain. Councillor Clemens? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Abstain. <laughs> I have four I, yes and four abstain. I, I know. <laughs> It's because we're doing, we're trying to do the right thing, even though it's a citizen committee, and God only knows where the election's going to go, and we technically could be citizens just serving on a committee. Um, I, I don't know how we want to approach that because we're going to be really at a stalemate constantly on this. I will um, go to jail for everybody, so I'd like to retract <laughs> my vote. I'll take it for the team. Right. There's no monetary value. It's just serving. Right. Do we need a motion to consider them? It looks like a fixed I'll make the motion. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, make I'll make a motion to reconsider. Second. With that being said, can we have a roll call again, please? Okay. So, yes. Councilor Marcucci. For, this is going to be for the reconsider, okay? Reconsidering, yeah. Yep. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Carrasco? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Mana? Yes. Eight yes? Okay. So, back, now back to the, the regular motion on the floor. Any other discussion on this? We'll try this. No, I'm not yeah, so we'll, tr we'll try this vote again. Okay, it's Council Moriarty. Abstain. <laughs> Council Nicola. <Abstain>. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Vandal. Yes. Councillor Crasco. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Clements. Yes. Councillor Langevin. I might go to jail also, but Did really, you? I'm just serving my community, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Mana. Yes. Councillor Marcucci. Bring me bread and sugar, yes. <laughs> now I have seven yes and one abstain. There Motion passes. Thank you, councillors. Uh, agenda in number 20, councillors forum. Uh, this evening I'll start with Councillor Vandal. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, down on uh, near the fair, down there near the Golden Creek, we gotta start getting work on that sidewalk down there. It, it is a dangerous spot. Every, just about every time I go by there, the, you know, people are pushing carriages, baby carriages, store carriages, and they're kind of out in the road, so I think we need the sidewalk there. And at the bottom of uh, West Street, right behind Domino's Pizza, there's a building there. You can see right through the, you can see right through the roof. It's a metal building. It's all rusty and decrepit, and, you know, something's got to be done with that building. Probably tell the owners to you know, take it down or something. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And just point of reference, uh, me and Ms. Hyden always had that conversation about down by Golden Creek because I know it was said at the at end of last year's construction season that they will be ready to go. So they're starting to ramp up things now, and I'm sure they'll get back to us with that answer, okay? Thank you. Certainly. Council Amanda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have a couple of things. Um, first, I want to speak on um, something that happened last at the last town council meeting at Citizens Forum. A citizen came forward and talked about the school committee meeting minutes and the citizens, um, when they have Citizens Forum or the information that the citizens aren't being recorded but in all actuality, they are being recorded. When a citizen goes up to the school committee and discusses things, they're, they're recorded into the minutes, and you can go on the school's website, and I went back to 2010, and I found all of that. So that statement was an inaccurate statement, and I just wanted to clarify that, because there was some discussion up here um, in regards to that with us. So um, I, I also, want to talk just for a couple minutes in regards to the petition. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to talk as a regular citizen, though, because I am a citizen of this town. It's going to affect me also as a citizen. Um, I, if I was not an elected official, I would be up at Citizens Forum with all my research that I did and I would be speaking out against this because this is going back in time. We're going backwards. 
and back, going backwards sometimes is not a good thing. And there's a lot of questions. And I really encourage the community to do their homework. When I asked the Sturbridge attorney if he could tell me if the citizens actually read this entire petition, I don't, I, I can't say if any of them did, but I know I've signed petitions before just to sign them. You know, this, this is a really important piece of paper right here. This lays out what they want as our government. And for anybody just to sign something and not know what's in it, and, and it's gonna change our form of government, that's wrong. You really need to do your homework. You need to ask questions. I have the revised bylaws um, from June 6, 1956, and if anybody wants them, I don't mind making copies. Um, I may even scan this, and I have a personal website. I may put it on my personal website. I'm asking perhaps maybe we can get the town clerk to scan this in and put it on her website. Maybe we can ask the town clerk also to put in all the revised um, town charters that we've had, going from 2003 forward. Maybe we can have all the old charters so our citizens can be well informed and, and they can compare. They can look at this petition and they can go through and they can see exactly what it is that they want changed. And they can make a well-informed decision. If, if that's something we can ask our town clerk to do, or whomever does that, if we can get all of our past town charters before they were revised, get the bylaws from 1956 onto the town's website, so the people can actually look at them. Maybe we can get it to the library, get a copy to the library, get them to some of the other places, have it posted downstairs in the hallway. This is too important just to sit on it and not inform the citizens. Like I said, I'm a citizen and this is going to affect me. This is going to affect my family, my friends, everybody. It's gonna affect everybody. So. If anybody knew me before I was a town councilor, I was always an advocate of getting the full information out there because when you get half information, you're not making a well-informed decision. So those are my comments, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Clements? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to uh, send a big kudos uh, and thank you out to Ted Bartlett. Um, I'm sure there are people here and people out there watching who were just as privileged as I was to go to a free concert on Saturday evening. And uh, it was by the good uh, works of, of Mr. Bartlett and many others who were listed as supporters for the event that we were able to have the um, Air Force Band come and play at the school. And it was a wonderful concert. Um, great group of, of uh, musicians. We, they were singing and dancing and pretty much everything. Um, and it was a very good turnout. While the auditorium, which is very large at the high school, was not completely full, it was near full and um, a testament to the community and, and the things that they like to participate in here. Uh, and I know Mr. Bartlett announced at the end that he was looking forward to getting the the Air Force Band back for us again um, in, the, in the upcoming years. So if you have the chance in the future to see them, whether it is here or somewhere else, I would encourage it. It was a wonderful performance, um, nostalgic, uh, and uh, very uh, tugged at your heart, definitely, um, with some of the stories and, and such that we heard. So congratulations to Mr. Bartlett for a job well done on that one. Um, and now we go back to business, and I would just like make a few comments. You know, it's been the budget season. It's not our funnest time of year up here as counselors, and um, you certainly do learn something new every year. Uh, it's been five for me and nine for Councillor Nicola over there, uh, many for, for others. But you know, it, we went, we've had budget meetings. Some, some of the committees, for instance, PPP with Mr. Mr. Councillor Moriarty, had to have two meetings in order to make it all happen. Same with uh, Councillor Marcucci in Education and Human Services. We had to have two meetings to make it all happen. One was three hour, uh, two hours with EHS, as you heard the minutes, and the other was four hours with the school committee. Four hours, seven to 11 o'clock at night. For many of us, that meant getting home about 11.30 by the time we actually 
um, vacated here. Um, and Councilor Moore, and DPW, over three hours DPW's meeting. Um, for the, those who say we don't take the issues that are put in front of us and the cost increases that are coming at us seriously and that our government's broken and, and we don't pay attention and all we do is say yes, you need to come to a subcommittee meeting. I would challenge those four that were sitting there, including Mr. Marino, to show up at a budget subcommittee meeting because I don't believe he was at any of them. Um, I usually don't take stabs like that, but in this case I am. Because to criticize without being there, without showing up like many of you who are sitting right there now, that I see you out there, um, whether it's Mr. Coed or Gus and Maureen, and you know, a lot of these people showed up at our subcommittee meetings and listened to what um, was going on and asked very informative questions, helped us do our job better. So I just want to say, you know, thanks to the colleagues who showed up at these subcommittee meetings because I think for all of us it's always a learning experience. Thanks to the community, um, the department heads and all who were able to keep our budget pretty decent. You know, we're under 3% increase on the, in the entire budget. That was with 2% increases in, in, um, in raises. Uh, many of the line items were zero or, or negative in order to compensate for the ever-increasing costs somewhere else. So I applaud uh, the work that they did this year. And yeah, can we save some more? We probably can and we are. We have plans to do some more meetings and to discuss some more savings for next year um, or some tweaks so that we can try to bring the numbers in line. But the reality is it's not cheap to run a town or a school or anything else. So. Um, on my high horse about that, but until you walk in our shoes and sit at those meetings for hours on end, don't criticize us when we come up here and we do our job and we vote yes or no without really much discussion. Because as it's been said by everybody up here, m most of that discussion, if all of it, has, been, has happened at those subcommittee meetings. So I encourage you, you know, you think this is going to be great? We're going to get 100 people, 150, 50, 10? What are we going to get here for a meeting? I don't know, but you can't even come to subcommittee. And, um, and participate then and let us know how you feel. Somehow I don't think you're going to show up here. Um, you have busy lives, families to take care of. Uh, so um, I just hope you, as you do, like Councilor Manna says, do your homework, do your research on, on what would be best for our community when it comes time for the vote in June. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Nicola. Thank you. Um, I know we have an election coming up and hopefully hearing about the blood, sweat and tears that goes on on the council for all of this doesn't scare away prospective prospects to the, to the town council arena at the polls. From what I've seen so far, we need more people coming forward and throwing their hats in the ring. Um, I debated whether I wanted to talk about this this evening. I debated whether I wanted to talk about it at all. I didn't know if it would be considered ethical, moral, self-serving, or whatever, but I don't care. If you live in this community and you care about this community, you need to consider running for town council. Seriously. We need to see some faces up here, some thoughtful people who pay attention, understand what's going on, understand the process, and are willing to devote some of their time. I'm concerned, and so should you be. I'm very concerned. I'm concerned when you have people who are running for town council who are authoring a different form of government for you. That should concern you. What does that mean? Why would you be offering a different form of town, of, of town government and yet running for the opposing government? I don't understand that. Maybe I'm stupid. I don't think so, and I don't think you think I'm stupid either. What I am is finishing up my third and final term as a counselor, and I look back and I'm worried about what I'm leaving. Because I think that more people, there are a lot more people in this community that have a lot more to offer and don't and should. I'm not going to drag you out of your houses and drag you into the town hall to take out papers. I don't have some fancy degree that got me up here, and neither does anybody else. I'm a citizen of your community that cares, and so should you. 
And I, I implore you, I do. I, I'm, the newspaper should be, should be publishing every time a new name is, is uh, a new person takes out papers, the, that should be given to the newspaper and the newspaper should be letting the, com the community know who's running for public office in this town. It's too late when you get to the polls, okay? It's too late when you hit the deadline date for getting your papers in to do anything. You should be seeing now who the potential candidates for your town council are. And if you're happy with that, great. If you're not, this is what's known as 41 Elm Street. It's open five days a week, Fridays till noon, Thursday nights until at least 7 o'clock. Come on down. They're a great bunch of people to work with. They will help you through the process. The council will help you through the process. Do it. I was never, ever involved in this kind of thing in my life. And at the age of 50, I decided to give it a shot. And you can hate me, love me, believe in me, agree with my, my decisions or not. That's okay. But you can't take away from the fact that I've committed myself for nine years to this town for you as well as for me. And you can do it too. It's not that hard. Really. So please think about it. Think about it. It's an important thing, and it's a rewarding thing. I've met a lot of wonderful people, and I've learned an awful lot about government, about this town, that I didn't know. I'd never seen the reservoirs in this town until I became a member of the town council. I didn't even realize how beautiful there are sections of in this community. Please think about it. I know a lot of people in this community that have a lot to offer, and they should be coming forward. They really should. And that's all I have to say. And I too enjoyed the concert the other night. It was wonderful. And I was happy to see so many people having an opportunity to see the, the, the school for the first time. <clears throat> that's something I'm very proud of. Um, as a member of, of the team that worked on that project, I take that with me. And you can take things with you too if you come up here. It isn't that tough, really. I'll help you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Moriarty. Thank you. Uh, it wasn't on my radar, my radar up until just a moment ago, really, I guess, but I just kind of want to echo a lot of uh, what Council Nicola kind of pointed out and a number of, of different quotes and proverbs that jump to mind, whether it's, you know, ask not or, or make a difference and, and be the change in the world you want to see, all those sort of. Uh, old chestnuts, but the uh, fact of the matter is it ends up being true. Uh, far too often we, we delegate and relegate uh, our duties and our freedoms to others and, and uh, you know, it comes out great when the next morning we're at Dunkin' Donuts or wherever and, and just kind of complaining about can you believe what they did that time or, or whatever. Um, it, it's, it's not an easy job at times, that's for sure, but uh, uh, you know, nothing worth doing is so. I think that's something that, that we do need good people. Uh, personally, you know, I, I've grown, I grew quite tired, and that's one of the reasons I ran, of, of seeing the same faces over and over, uh, just kind of being recycled um, as candidates and, and counselors and such. And um, so I, I'm, I'm all for getting some, some new blood, fresh faces, fresh ideas involved. Uh, you know, sometimes that doesn't work out well, but that's fine. Uh, you know, we just need to, to do something that way. Uh, otherwise, I, I wanted to kind of just point out a couple other things. Uh, one, uh, I saw today some photos uh, from Officer Cindy Ivansky's uh, retirement party and uh, just kind of wanted to recognize her and thank her for her service over the last 31 years. Uh, I've known Cindy since I was uh, probably in diapers, probably, um, with my brother working with her. So. Uh, she's one of the most honest and sincere and, and professional uh, officers I've ever met and I uh, just wanted to kind of wish her well going forward. Uh, also, this upcoming Sunday, just a nice community event uh, is uh, the Relay Fun Day down on the Southbridgetown Common, Sunday, May 4th. That runs from 10 to 3. They have different vendors and uh, Billy Belanger's down there with the train and other amusement type rides. There's free music, there's food. Uh, different things going on. 
uh, down on the town common, and, and that's just a nice event, uh, a cheap day out. Uh, you can do it for free, really, depending on how you do it. Um, and then just lastly, uh, I suppose the, the more appropriate time was while she was here, but uh, just as far as uh, Robin Latai and her presentation, uh, I just wanted to kind of thank and recognize her similar to as the chair did in terms of her, her raising awareness and, and being an advocate uh, in terms of, of organ donors and, and, and things like that. Uh, certainly, uh, Robin has seen, as, as many of us have as well, uh, you know, you can't really take life for granted. You'd never know uh, when that clock is up. We each get, you know, uh, an undetermined number of, of spins around the sun. And, um, you know, so I think it's great that, that she was able to go through what was obviously a difficult and, and harrowing experience, but to come through it uh, so strongly and to come through it finding kind of the positive, the silver lining of a difficult journey um, and, and taking those steps to to make sure that people are aware of that and as to how to go forward and, and, and raise that awareness. Um, so hopefully, I know I have on my license, I've got that little heart uh, with the OD on there. Um, so, you know, hopefully many others do. And if you don't, please consider it. Uh, you, you have no idea whose life you could be saving. It, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Carrasco. Yes, um, I just have a few things. Um, one of them I also want to echo and thank um, Officer Ivansky for her service for 31 years on our police department. Um, I also known her for a very long time, and I just want to thank her for the service. I also want to echo one of the, uh, the announcements that our chairman made. Um, speeding and pedestrian crossing, um, please let's be aware of it. Um, we had a fatality last year. Um, let's, let's not have it again. Please be aware of people crossing the streets. Slow down, watch what we're doing um, when we're driving. And the third thing is um, I, I encourage all those of faith um, on Thursday is National Day of Prayer. Um, our, our nation needs prayer. Our town needs prayer. Our government needs prayer. So if, um, if you just take a few moments, it's National Day of Prayer this Thursday, May 1st. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Marcucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, one point I'd like to bring out. I know, Councilor Manny, you're concerned, um, as all councilors and I'm sure citizens, about what's going to be on the agenda in June as far as the change in the form of government. This past week I had a conversation with Don Jutton, who is the president of the company that we hired for the town manager search. With the approval of the town council, and I will discuss it with the chairman, uh, maybe we could get it on our next agenda for approval. There is um, an organization, they're called the International City Management Association. They're out of Worcester. It's free. They will come down, um, and I don't know if it's something we can get together with the local cable access. They'll, we don't necessarily have to be here, but it's almost like a, a presentation on the pros and cons of the form of government. And hopefully the petition that was um, presented to us, and I believe Mr. Marino is the chair of that, that hopefully at some point um, they'll do the town a favor and get up and speak about why they feel this change in government will be beneficial to the town of Southbridge. Uh, so I just want you to know that with the approval of the town council, um, I'll talk to the chairman, maybe we can get it on May 5th's agenda and have them come down and do a presentation, not necessarily to us, but something that can be recorded by our um, cable access committee to, just to educate people. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. With that being said, just, you know, as Council Maikuchi just reached out, uh, feel free to reach out to her and give you your opinions and stuff like that so we can uh, uh, move forward on really, like I said, I'm sure both sides are going to be educating the public. Um, so it's due diligence. Um, it kind of takes this council as a whole 
out of it, um, and you have uh, not a partisan company or whatever come in here and educate them uh, on the pros and cons versus what's happening now. So just please reach out to Council Marcucci and share your feelings, and I'm sure she'll reach out to me, and uh, then we can hopefully move forward. Uh, agenda item number 21. Discussion of the next meeting date, Council Marcucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That will be Monday, May 5th, 7 p.m., Council Chambers. Thank you. And agenda item number 22, I'm looking for a motion for adjournment. All in favor, show of hands is fine. Thank you, everyone. Everyone have a great night.